What's up guys, Chen here with Rise Magic and today we have a sequel to one of our most popular videos of all time, top five card games of all time. So today we're gonna go over just five more amazing card games. Now if you know me, you know I love playing card games. Obviously we got an insane amount of decks because of our obsession with magic and card street, but there's nothing I love more than having a few friends over and playing some high intensity card games. In fact, I love card games so much, it's one of the main reasons I left Rise playing cards V1, gaff free, marking free, so that we can have integrity when we play card games with this deck. Now, if you haven't seen the first video, we made that about two years ago, and it was my five favorite card games of all time. That list hasn't changed, I still love those card games, so if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out in the description, but this video, we're gonna go over five more games but I'm gonna list them in order of simplest to most complex, so you can start with some easy ones and move to some more difficult ones. These are still really amazing games. If you want variety, be sure to check this out. Now, I feel like where you grew up regionally or worldwide affects how you play certain games, certainly the name of the game, certainly different, little intricate different rule changes in those games. I wanna hear about all that and any other game suggestions you have in the comment section below. And hey, last video was pretty popular, so let's try and get this one to 3,000 likes. So game number one is called Slapjack, and if you wanna know the rules, those are the rules. You slap the jack. You can play this game with two to really an unlimited amount of players. You just add decks so there's more jacks to hit, and you have to hit the same spot, so it's kinda of limited by you know spacing, but you really can have as many people as you want, in theory. Basically, you go clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever direction you wanna go. You evenly distribute and deal the cards to however many people are playing, and then you just turn the cards over in a way that you can't see at first. You turn them off, put them in the middle, put them in the middle. When you see a jack, the first person out of anybody playing to slap that jack takes the cards, and the goal of the game is to get all the cards. So, you go in a circle, bam! That jack hits the first person to have their hand at the bottom of the pile, the first person to react the quickest, gets all those cards. So this is really a game based entirely on reaction time. And yes, it can get heated. And yes, you know, I guess it could get violent, you know, if you took it a little too seriously. But then again, just if that happens, settle things the old fashioned way. You know what I'm saying? Oh! I can't say that on YouTube. What if I just put a little disclaimer? Rise Magic does not endorse violence. That was a joke. Moving on from our simplest game, Slapjack, to our next game. This game is pretty garbage. I mean, seriously, the name of the game is garbage. This is a pretty simple game. Basically, you got two decks, you mix them up, you deal out 10 cards to every player. I would say you can have two to five players in this game, and you have a set two rows of five. You turn over the top card on the pile when it's your turn, and if it's a number card, you can put it in the corresponding slot in your face down pile in one through 10. The goal is to get one through 10 covered with face up cards. So you turn a card over, if it fits in your slot, bam, you put it in the numbers one through 10. Now you keep going until you can't play anymore. The important thing is any face card, any royal Jack, Queen, King is garbage because it doesn't fit in the one through 10. However, Jacks are wild, like they are in a lot of card games. So basically you play your turn and you go until you can't go no more, and then the next person goes. The first person to get all 10, they're good to go. Now let's say your seven is already taken and you turn over a seven, your turn's over. Let's say you turn over a king, your turn's over. Turn over a queen, your turn's over. But you keep going till your turn is over. Keep in mind, jacks are wild, so you can make some pretty crazy sub plays. You gotta pay attention. Honestly, those are the rules. It's pretty simple, just like that. Now for all these games I'm talking about in this video, I'm given the general rules, and you should be able to play it just by watching this video, but especially for the last two games, you might wanna look at the full rule set in the description below. I'm gonna link every single game's written rules so you can take an in-depth look. Moving on, but a quick break to note that if you're watching this video and thinking, wow, you guys look great in this video. <laughs> it's probably the merch, guys. If you notice, everyone in this video has a different shade of the Rise Magic hoodie. We got hoodies, we got long sleeves, we got short sleeves, we got hats, so much masks, so much more on rise-magic.com forward slash store. Guys, it's been three years for us to get merch, so uh, if you ever wanted it in the past three years, it's available now. Go check it out. Moving on to Kings in the Corner is our third game. This game can also have two to five players. You deal out seven cards to every person playing, put the rest of the cards in the middle, turn over four cards and put them on all four sides of that deck in the middle. From there, you take turns 
trying to descend down, kind of like solitaire, in alternating color order to get rid of all your cards. At the start of every turn, you draw a card. It's important to know. Now, what makes this game interesting is that when you have a king, you get to put it in the diagonal corners up there when it's your turn. So a king, automatically discard a card, and you stack down. Now, what's important is you can move stacks. So let's say this stack over here has eight, seven, six, and the other stack has five, four, three. You can move that entire stack and drop it on top and then put a new card to complete that slot right over there. You just go to your out of cards. That's pretty Chicken. much it. Kings in the so corner. Hot. It's a simple one, kind of like individual competitive like solitaire. Winner, winner! Next up, I know this is gonna be a crowd favorite. It wasn't in my first video because personally, it took me so long to truly digest it and figure it out because if you're playing as an experienced player, you got no shot. This is like Slapjack on steroids. That's right, it's ERS Egyptian Rat Screw. Absolutely no idea where that name comes from. That is just bonkers. And as this one is number four, you can imagine it's pretty complicated. So you take turns turning over cards like Slapjack. Very simple at first. You slap to take the cards and you wanna get all the cards like Slapjack, but you don't slap on jacks. You slap on doubles and sandwiches. What that means, if you put down a six and the next person puts down a six, you slap. That's a stack. If you put down a six, the other person puts down a nine and the next person puts down a six, that's a sandwich. You slap on that. So it's a little bit more complicated than just looking for a jack. You gotta look for patterns like stacks or sandwiches. Now you could just play the game that way, right? There's different ways you can play every game. You could just play that way, just like a more complicated slapjack. But if you wanna play true Egyptian rat screw, there is the extra fold that, let's say I put down a jack, that means the next person has to match that card with a face card or I take all the cards. If I put down a jack, he only has one chance to match that jack with another face card. If it's a queen, he gets two chances, king, he gets three chances, ace, he gets four chances, and so on. So imagine this situation, I put down a queen, they put down a 10 and a jack, oh my gosh, they match, the next person only has one chance, bam, and then that person takes all those cards. <sighs> this game takes a long time to learn. Maybe it doesn't, maybe, maybe I'm just stupid, but for me it took a long time to learn, but it really is fun once you get the hang of it. Lastly, we have Nerds. I learned this game this summer. It's really fun, but definitely the most complicated game on this list by far. I'm tossing it in here because I know lots of you guys out there like me like to collect cards. And what's great about this game is that everyone needs their own deck. It's a requirement. Everyone has their own deck and every deck needs to be different. So basically how this works, it's a live trading game while you play solitaire with yourself. I'm gonna try and explain this as quickly as possible, but like I said, full rule set in the description, but I'll go over it quickly. So pretty much what happens is you get your own deck of cards, you're gonna deal yourself four cards face up, and then 13 cards next to it, and then one face over, okay? Then you're gonna put your extra cards over to the side. Basically what happens is live in the middle of the table, you wanna stack cards from ace to king, and then that pile's dead. So if any of the players have an ace, they put it out in the center, the game starts. You have to stack with the right suit and color. So let's say there's an ace of spades on the table, I have a two of spades, I put that on top, and then I replace from my 13 card pile and the four ones I have placed after it. The goal of the game is to get rid of that 13 stack you have. First person who does, wins. There is a more complicated scoring version, because all the cards are different, you can see who put the most cards out in the center when you collect them at the end and sort them at the end. Now, pretty much here you can see through the footage, you're just placing the cards on top and stacking. It can get pretty hectic at times. You really have to be paying attention, like close attention to make sure that your five options in front of you have plays in the center. Now, when you don't have any plays, that's when you look at your extra pile, you pick up three cards and see if you can start any plays and then put it down into your discard, pick up three until you have a move. That's what keeps the game flowing and moving. But once it gets flowing and moving, it gets really fast. Now this footage you're seeing, I had to teach most of my friends in the video this game today, and it does take a while to pick up. So normally it's a little bit more fast paced than this, but it is really fun. Oh, one added wrinkle. To help yourself get rid of your cards, you actually can play solitaire with those five options you have laying out in front of you. You can stack down or up with the same color. 
It's really complicated. For this one, I think the video had to be 25 minutes for me to explain everything super in depth, but if you're playing with some card sharks, it is really, really fun. So definitely read the full rule set in the description below. All right, guys, that's the video. Shout out to all my friends for being a part of this video. Shout out to my friend Ryan Sheridan for filming. And hey, be sure to like and subscribe and comment. I know it just sounds like something YouTubers are supposed to say, but in this case, I love card games. I want to hear what games you guys play. Leave them in the comment section below. Rise Magic merch available now. We stream live every Monday and Thursday. Come hang out, have fun. Unfortunately, not streaming tonight because I'm away on a business trip, but next Monday will be a grand old time doing deck giveaways per usual. If you want to win an amazing deck of cards, be sure to tune into the streams Monday and Thursday. It's the easiest way to win a deck. All right, guys. Love you. See you next time. Peace out. Thank you.